Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 7th of September and this month's non-farm payrolls webinar. In this case it's the August payrolls report. Before I get started I have to um, do a couple of housekeeping rules, a couple of risk warnings for you to digest. Um, anything that you hear on this webinar should not be construed as trading advice because it isn't but ultimately what, I want to, what I'm hoping to do is outline the key areas of support and resistance, um, trend lines, um, potential turning points in the market in the aftermath of this afternoon's payrolls report of which there are two. We have the US jobs report for August and we also have the Canadian jobs report for August. And I think both these reports are going to be important in the context of when the next rate rise is coming from not only the Federal Reserve, but also from the Bank of Canada. Because I think if the Federal Reserve hikes rates this month, which is still pretty much priced in, it's still a pretty much a done deal. The big question then after that is whether or not the Bank of Canada will follow suit, given the concerns that there are about a potential NAFTA deal um, being played out or not. So lots of lots of fundamentals overshadowing today's payrolls report. By and large, the economic data we're out of the US has been um, pretty well positive across the board. Um, certainly we've seen significant divergence between European equity markets and US equity markets, but there does appear, I think, to be some signs that potentially US markets may be looking um, to be slightly exhausted. Um, they, they appear to be running out of steam. This week we've seen new record highs for Apple and Amazon. Amazon briefly became a trillion dollar company, the second company to do so. Apple still remains a trillion dollar company and Apple's got a very big event next week. A a, a release date for um, a range of product upgrades um, and that's on the 12th of September so for all you Apple fans that should be fairly that should be a fairly interesting day in the context of the next move in the share price I'll talk a little bit about that later on if I have time but the main focus today is going to be on the US payrolls report uh, for August. Now let's look at what we're expecting for this report. I think the headline number is less important really um, than the actual wages numbers. Once again it's all about the direction of the dollar. Obviously we've seen um, significant new lows, multi-month lows for not only European markets this week but also emerging markets and yet US markets have remained largely unaffected. But as I said in my lead up I think there is some evidence that we could be building up for a little bit of a correction on US markets and for that I'm using the NASDAQ and then the NASDAQ 100 got a nice little trend line through here. We appear to have broken it but what we haven't done as yet is broken the 50 day moving average so I think in terms of equity market reaction to today's report the key level that I'm watching for is on the NASDAQ 100 it's the 50 day moving average because if we close below that then I think there's certainly scope for a significant correction lower in US equity markets and one of the things I have noted over the course of the past few days is even though the S&P and the NASDAQ have made new record highs the Dow Jones has not and you know as with all technical analysis analysts I place a great deal of emphasis around Dow theory and you know while we have seen further advances in US equity markets I'm always a little bit suspicious that this divergence between what the US is doing and what the rest of the world is doing can continue indefinitely I don't believe that it can and ultimately there does become a tipping point and I think if we look at a weekly chart of the Nasdaq this is where it could get interesting potentially building up for a bearish engulfing week for the NASDAQ. Now the last time we saw one of them 
was all the way back at the beginning of the year um, and it did preempt a very sharp down move to the downside before rebounding so I think even if we do get a move lower over the course of the next two to three weeks we still need to be very cognizant of the fact that we could get a very sharp snapback. Now I've got the economic calendar with the various um, updates that I'm particularly interested in and in this case it's the um, the these four here non-farm payrolls average earnings the unemployment rate probably less important um, than the actual wages numbers and obviously the headline number for the um, the Canadian jobs report so I'm keeping an eye out on the Nasdaq in particular for a potential move next move on US markets we can also see that um, on the S&P 500 as well um, this was the previous peak from earlier this year we've broken above that 2875 really I think we would I would be expecting um, a concerted move below 2870 for us to really start to push back down towards the 50-day moving average again it's very very difficult to establish with any degree of certainty as to whether or not we're going to get further losses for US markets um, on, on against a background of a fairly strong dollar but what I have noticed over the past few days is for all this talk of a stronger dollar and I think this is important because I think it could have a significant uh, it could it could have a significant effect on where emerging markets go next they've been under pressure on a, as a result of all these trade concerns and what have you but this is the dollar index now the dollar index would appear to be showing signs of exhaustion exhaustion easy for me to say but I'm looking at this chart and I'm thinking is this a little bit of a potential reversal building up on the dollar index because um, if I draw or I link these lows through here it could conceivably argued that there's a little bit of a irregular head and shoulders building up here this is the left shoulder here this is the head this is the right shoulder okay you can it's open for debate as to whether or not you argue that this is also a left shoulder but ultimately I think what I think we can determine is this trend line here from the June lows I think is going to be very very important in the overall context of where we go to next now this week's ISM surveys were universally positive in the context of all the main data points going forward new orders employment uh, the headline number and uh, what have you but what was quite interesting was that prices paid actually softened from the July readings for not only manufacturing but also for, for, for services as well and I think the Fed has the Federal Reserve is going to have significant a number of concerns about first and foremost the strength of the dollar but also perceptions of the speed of their rate hiking cycle so while today's numbers I don't think will have any bearing on when the Fed raises rates this month and I still think there's pretty much a 95 to 100 percent possibility that that will happen this data could determine how the markets price the prospect of a December rate rise and I think in that context wages will be very very important because for the past three to four months wages have gone pretty much nowhere they've been stuck at 2.7 percent um, inflation on the Fed's measure is 1.9 to 2% so we're getting very meagre real wages growth it's it's there but it's not particularly noticeable and I think what we want to see is an acceleration in that given that this week's ADP report was fairly weak it was around about 150 160 and that in itself is not so much of a surprise if you've got a tight labor market then you're not going to be able to fill as many jobs as you like which then means that if you want to fill those jobs you're going to have to start paying people more money at the moment the wage growth hasn't really been filtering through if it does though and we get a decent wages number then I think this trend line support here will hold on the dollar index and we'll get a rebound back to around about 95 and a half 96 
we're around about 95 at the moment so in the overall scheme of things it's going to have to be a pretty poor number pretty much across the board particularly on wages for, for the dollar index to break through this downtrend like this uptrend line here so how does that affect euro dollar well we can see that quite clearly here there's a good resistance at around about 116 and a half and the solid support at around about 115 now we're stuck in the middle at the moment and we're not really going anywhere so it's very difficult I think at the moment to really determine one way or the other which way we're going to go we're stuck in a 50 point range for euro dollar at the moment decent resistance at 116 and a half if we get a weak number, uh, weak dollar, strong euro number, weak dollar number, then we could well push up above 116.50 and head back towards the range highs of around 117.5. But again, we're not really going anywhere because traders are still concerned about the prospect um, that the tariffs that President Trump might be uh, inclined to levy on the European auto sector. We've already seen in the data this morning out of Germany that trade concerns are starting to have a significant slowing effect not only on the German economy but the European economy as a whole. If you look at euro dollar on a slightly longer term scale you've also got a similar sort of thing here with respect to a potential upside down head and shoulders but again for me I think it's really messy and it's not really conducive but certainly the neckline comes in around about 117.40, 117.50 if you assume that this is the left shoulder, this is the head and this is the formation of the right shoulder. We did break out of this triangular pattern earlier uh, this year. We only reached our uh, 112.85 target. We didn't reach our minimum price objective of 113. So at the moment that the outlook for euro dollar remains pretty mixed and pretty difficult to judge. Which brings me to cable. Now cable is one of those, we're right on a very big resistance level at the moment. We've got the 50 day moving average, we have spiked above it but we haven't closed above it and we've got these peaks here at around about 130.40, 130.50. So we could squeeze through 130.50 on a poor payrolls number. On a good payrolls number or a wages number, we could come all the way back down to these lows that we saw around about 127.85 um, um, earlier, th earlier this week. This is a daily candle chart. We can see quite clearly that there's a decent area of resistance between 130.40 and 130.60. So it's going to be a, have to be a particularly weak number for the cable to move back towards this trend line resistance from the highs that we saw in May. So even if we get a weak dollar number, I really don't expect the pound to move much above the top part of this line that we have here. Before we go anywhere else, let's quickly look at good dollar CAD because it's the Canadian jobs report as well. We've broken out of this downtrend line here from the highs that we saw back in June. We're now looking to retest the 50 day moving average. So I think with respect to dollar CAD, if we do see a retest of the 50 day moving average down here, we could potentially get a rebound, particularly if it's a weak US jobs report on a strong Canada jobs report. It was a strong Canada jobs report uh, last month. Uh, the headline number was 54.1. But what was notable about that jobs report was the number of part time jobs that were added to the overall number. So it wasn't a particularly good number when you actually dug around into the internals. Most of the jobs gains in Canada were part-time jobs. So in terms of non-farm payrolls, um, expecting 191, you know, again, if we, if we come in much below 150, I'll be surprised. If we come in around about 220, 230, again, I'll, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. Also, don't be surprised if we get a significant revision in July. Ultimately, for me, it's all about the wages numbers. The dollar's looking a little bit soft, so if they do come in on the soft side, I would expect an initial sell-off, but I don't expect the dollar to collapse. I would expect to see a little bit of a push higher in euro dollar and cable in the event of a week's U a weak US jobs report. So let's look at the numbers, fasten our seat belts and get ready for the numbers. Two hundred and one. 
on the headline jobs. 2.9, that's a very positive um, average earnings number, very dollar positive. Not surprisingly, you're probably going to see uh, the pound come off quite aggressively, euro dollar come off quite aggressively. Um, so that 2.9 number, very dollar positive, going to push the dollar significantly higher um, and mean that ultimately I think we could potentially have seen the highs of the day, not only in euro dollar, but certainly in the context of the pound against the dollar. It's also, I think, probably going to be a little bit of... Um, a negative for emerging markets because ultimately it will make um, it much more likely the Fed is going to go in December as well as September and that Canadian jobs report is awful. Minus 51.6. Sorry I got there in the end and unemployment's gone up to 6%. So poor Canadian jobs report, decent US jobs report. It looks to me as if dollar CAD's probably going to go up and retest 132 the highs of earlier this week over the course of the rest of the trading session and and head higher so 3.9 unemployment rate us revision for the previous payrolls report for the us is down to 147 so a slight downward revision there so again the headline numbers not really amounting to much it's this bad boy here 2.9 percent um, finally we're starting to see tightness in the labor market spilling over into higher wages and the hope is that that will obviously manifest itself in UK wages next week so ultimately that means a higher dollar let's have a quick look at the dollar index not surprisingly the dollar index has gone positive for the day it's also going to be fairly positive for dollar yen. If we look at dollar yen here, we can see that we've got fairly decent support on the dollar at around about the 110 and a half area. And again, here in the dollar yen, I look at Kumo clouds on dollar yen. I find them fairly useful in terms of showing me showing me where the support and resistance levels are on the dailies so we can see from here that there's a decent likelihood that as long as we stay above this lower line in dollar yen then we should head back towards the range highs that we've got over here if we look at the price action over the course of the past week or so on dollar yen it stayed pretty much within the cloud for all of that period when it breaks above the cloud or into the cloud or through the cloud it generally tends to move to the other side of it so Dollar yen, in all likelihood, will probably re look to retest the 200 day, the, sorry, the 50 day moving average, which currently runs through here, um, and look to move back towards the roundabout the 1 and 11 and a half, 111, 111 and a half, as long as we stay below 11080 in the short to medium term. So, I would I would argue that this it's a fairly fairly positive dollar figure. Um, basically refocuses people's attention on what the Fed is going to do in December. Um, gonna get, we're going to get a rate hike in, in September. It's really a question of how many more do we get going forward. This does nothing to diminish the outlook for US rates and I think that is important. What does it do for equity markets? Well ultimately I think potentially it's negative for equity markets because what it means is that further tighter US, further further gains in the dollar, further gains in US rates are going to increase the risks to emerging markets. They increase the risk to emerging markets. It, it means that we could well see further losses in the short to medium term. And the next level I'm looking at now on the FTSE is these two lows through here, which is around about 7190, 7200 for a move lower in the FTSE 100. Looking at the German DAX, now that we're below 12,100 on a technical level, we're really looking at this series of lows through here that we saw at the beginning of the year in March. In fact, if I change that to a line chart, it'll probably give us a better indication of where the support level is. 
and it's around about 11,750, 11,780 on a, on, a da on a daily close. So changing that back there to a candle chart. There we go. Let's do that. I always use candle charts. They're always fairly useful in terms of the overall price structure. Um, so looking at 12,000 at the moment for, for on resistance and above that 12,100 looking well below this series of levels here for further losses in the DAX down towards the lows that we saw earlier this year. I don't think we're going to see that today but certainly I think in terms of the macro outlook and the fact that President Trump could well implement further tariffs and I think tariffs is going to be the, th the key thing here. You've got NAFTA outstanding, you've got the potential for further tariffs on China, you've got the potential for further tariffs on the European Union and you also had those reports out this morning about the potential for further tariffs on J or potential tariffs on Japan. Now if if Donald Trump decides to go after Japan you know it doesn't leave an awful lot of room for anything else and ultimately in terms of risk I think that's going to be an under it's going, it's going to be a significant a significant negative. Okay I'm being asked about um, Sterling CAD and Sterling Aussie. Right, we're right on a key resistance level on Sterling CAD at the moment. Let's have a look at this on a daily chart. Well, from this, I mean, Sterling CAD looks fairly well bid. We're right up against resistance at the moment. I would be I would be reluctant to sell it too aggressively ahead of the 200 week moving average, but 200 day moving average, but we're still quite well short of it. Um, should find decent support around about 170. Um, if we look at a hourly chart, it'll probably give me slightly more information. Here we go. Nice little trend line here. Let's draw that in. So it's very much by the dips on Sterling CAD. Looks a little bit toppy at these the, these sorts of levels. Um, but certainly I think in the context of trading Sterling CAD at the moment, I would certainly be looking to buy dips in the short to medium term for a move higher while above this trend line that we currently have back down here around about 169.5. I would wait for the market to come to me if I'm looking to buy these dips, but certainly in terms of these highs here around about 171, we could see a few stops get triggered through here, might squeeze a little bit higher um, before drifting back down again. Looking at Sterling Aussie. Oh, I don't like the look of that chart at all, but it does look as if it's breaking out. I think with CAD you've also got to basically play play it in the context of the oil price. And if oil prices start to drift lower, that could well be negative for the Canadian dollar. Um, NAFTA concerns obviously notwithstanding. But um, we are we're quite we're quite near um, a bit of a level on sterling Aussie here. Let's just get rid of these lines and declutter the chart a little bit and draw some horizontal lines in through here. Yeah, I mean where we are now is a bit of a level 180, 170, 182. Um, it was decent support when we were trading sideways through here and through here. I think if we're going to if we're going to make further gains on sterling Aussie, then we really need to push through 182 and a half. One, certainly this 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 peak here at 182.40 to really bring us back towards these highs that we saw at the beginning of the year of around about 185. But certainly the direction of travel does appear to be positive. But I think we could see a little bit of selling kick in while we're below. Um, this previous peak here which is around about 182.40 so hopefully that helps you out in some way with respect to sterling aussie 
and sterling CAD. And just drill it down again. Again, it's a similar sort of story, not unsurprisingly. Looks a little bit overbought. So certainly wouldn't be looking to go long into the weekend on this particular um, on this particular chart. Notwithstanding the fact that we're um, we're so close to the 50-day moving average on the cable, I think if you're going to be looking for further sterling gains, then you really need to be looking for a significant break through these peaks here, and I'm not convinced we're going to get that today, um, or this, or or, the, or this week for that matter. That's not to say that I don't think that the pound isn't going to strengthen, because certainly if we look at euro sterling. I think there is some evidence that we've probably seen the highs in euro sterling and could well head back lower. Now those of you who um, are regular readers of my commentary will know over the course of the past few days I've suggested that we could well head lower on euro sterling and there's a number of reasons why I've thought that um, this could well be the case. First and foremost last week on euro sterling we saw a very nice bearish engulfing day um, which would appear to suggest that we could well head back lower. What was more important though is we also saw it on the weekly chart. A key reversal week, so we saw a key reversal day, we saw a key reversal week and that would suggest to me that now having failed to move back above 9040 we did, we did trigger a few stops through there earlier this week. Having failed to get through 9040 we're probably going to head back towards the 88.20, 88.30 level over the course of the next few sessions. We could see further sterling gains. It's a big week next week for the pound. When isn't it? I hear you say. Um, but it is. It's, we've got the Bank of England rate meeting on Thursday. We also have the latest wages data and unemployment data on Tuesday. And if today's US wages numbers are a decent indicator, then I would like to think that we could well see wage growth in the UK start to exert upward pressure on prices, which should should be sterling positive. So for me, I think with the Bank of England and wages due next week, a positive surprise on wages could well exert further upside pressure in the pound after what has been a very disappointing few weeks where the pound has slipped progressively lower um, since April. Um, I do think we've seen a short-term top and we could start to head back down again. Um, certainly based on the charts, the key reversal week and the key reversal day that we saw um, in August. I've been asked about EuroCAD, so I'll have a quick look at that. Um, again, a nice bit of resistance here on the 200 day moving average on EuroCAD. Um, looking at the dailies, potential for a little bit of a reversal there on the daily candle. What I would be looking for on this is if we look at the low here and the low here, I would be looking for a move down below 152.20 to signal that we're going to probably go for a little bit of a further trip to the downside on the EuroCAD. Certainly I think it's giving us a number of mixed messages on a technical level, but certainly I think there's potential for a bit of Canada strength, a bit of Euro weakness. Certainly I think the economic data that we've got out of Europe would suggest that all of this stuff about the ECB cutting back on its bond buying program and talking about the potential for a rate rise next year. The ECB is not going to be doing anything with rates anytime soon and anyone who tells you otherwise is I think talking their book. Um, and they, they want to be longer euros. I can't really be positive on the euro um, only in the context of a weaker dollar, certainly not in the context of a particularly strong euro currency. Um, so EuroCAD looks a little bit toppy around about the 200 day moving average. We can probably also draw a line, a trend line through the highs. The trend is most definitely down for EuroCAD. So it's very, I think it's very much a case of sell Euro strength um, 
until such times as this downtrend is broken. And I think it's pretty much the same if you look at euro dollar as well. Yeah, we have made a little bit of a potential for a rebound here, but the, st the trend still remains down. And while we may argue the case for an inverse head and shoulders here, until such times as we see a break of 117.50, the, the strategy is the same. Buy the dip on the dollar, um, sell the euro on rallies, and potentially um, sell sterling on rallies until such times as it gets above 130.5. And, and then we could get a small move to around about 130.175, 131.80. Next week, we've also got the European Central Bank rate meeting. Not expecting any surprises whatsoever out of that. The tapering process is expected to start at the end of this month with a view to ending at the end of this year. Next week we've also got Chinese industrial production and retail sales data on Thursday the 14th of August. Um, well, no, actually it's Friday, the 14th, yeah, it's Friday the 14th of September for August. It helps if I read my own notes correctly. Uh, Chinese industrial production, Chinese retail sales and Chinese fixed asset investment is the second biggest economy in the world starting to slow or continuing to slow. These da this, this data on the Friday will tell us all we need to know. We also have US retail sales for August. That's also out on the 14th of September. So Bank of England Thursday, ECB rate meeting Thursday, UK wages and unemployment on Tuesday, US retail sales on Friday, Chinese data on Friday, and on the 12th of September, we've got the latest Apple products launch. So all of those Apple fans out there, let's have a quick look at Apple's share price. Got it right here. Let's pull it over. We've seen a nice little roll over there. But look how far we are away from the 200 day moving average. There is certainly potential for a move back towards the 20th of August highs around about 220, which is not that far away from where we are at the moment. So, um, will the product launch tell us anything that we're not already that we don't already know? Will there be a new iPhone, an XS? So people are expect are speculating about the release of the iPhone XS. We may see upgrades to the iPhone 8. We may well see a new Apple Watch. And we may see some upgrades to the various iPad versions, though I think there's a good chance the iPad mini may be phased out. So that's it for today. And that's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen, unless anyone has any other questions that they'd like to put to me. Um, I'd like to wish you all a great weekend and um, hope uh, uh, you are... Uh, make loads of money not only the rest of the time we have the rest of the time we have today but also next week have a great weekend ladies and gentlemen and um, speak to you all soon and if i don't see you in birmingham i'll see you sometime on the web <laughs>